right here in the front. Steve, could you talk, uh, Jeff brought up Mercury News, could you talk briefly about your experience as both a coach and a player and how game one in a series can perhaps set a tone? Uh, it, it, it always feels different. Um, the finals feel different from the conference finals and everything before that. Um, it's just, there's just a different vibe. You know, you practice at the arena instead of at your facility. You have a podium instead of a desk or <laughs> picnic chairs. Um, it's just, there's, everything's a little different. And um, the logos on the floor are different. And, and so my first experience in the finals, um, I noticed all that. It just felt sort of bigger than what it was. And uh, so I think the biggest thing going into game one is just to get everybody settled down. I think both teams are going to be a little hyper, a little um, on edge, because this is what this, this moment brings. You've got a lot of guys who played in a lot of these, but you have a few guys in the finals for the first time. Do your other players help, you know, usher them into this, or do you, or is it just sort of go unstated? No, I, I think it helps to have the experience. Um, most of our guys have have uh, finals experience. Um, even our young guys, um, you know, Looney may not have played uh, much, or if if at all, but he's been here. He's felt this. Uh, so we've got a couple guys, Nick Young, um, Jordan Bell, so I think the other players can help them with that. Um, but I think the experience is you, you feel that first game, you settle in, and then you, you kind of go from there. Tim, third row on the right. Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press. Steve, um, I'm guessing it didn't surprise you at all to find out that Kevin Love was good to go for tonight. Uh, it, it didn't uh, surprise me. Um, uh, I'm glad he's playing. I, uh, I, I think we want everybody playing. We want everybody healthy and out there competing, and, and uh, so I'm happy for him. Again in the front row. Hey, Steve Bruce McGowan from uh, KCBS. Just curious, you only had three days between the conference finals and this. Is it kind of uh, you feel better about that because in the, in the past it always seems like there's been a week or six yeah. or seven days. You get right back into it. I think I'd, I'd rather get right into it even if you're not quite as prepared. Um, you know, slightly underprepared but in rhythm is better than overprepared and waiting around for eight days. Um, so, uh, you know, when you go through that, and I know Cleveland's been through it many times over the last few years, so... You know, Ty, Ty gets it to you. You know, then you have eight days and you want to keep rhythm. And then you feel like, well, we got to scrimmage. Because you never go eight days without a game in the regular season. And so then you scrimmage and then you're praying and nobody gets hurt. And so that's a weird vibe. Uh, this is much better. Um, but I think it leaves us, uh, and Cleveland a little bit too. I know they finished the day before us. But um, it, it leaves us slightly less prepared in, in terms of, you know, what we can go through. But... Um, I prefer it that way. Mark at back right. Mark Spears, the undefeated. Steve, um, what do you guys do over the next two days to test Iguodala and, and, and determine whether he's ready or not? Just the usual stuff. The training staff will put him through any court work and, and um, any type of assessment, and then they'll just tell us uh, if he's ready or not. Joe in the fourth row on the right. Joe Harden, Cleveland.com. Uh, Steve, you've had some history with this question in previous finals, but who are you going with tonight, starter-wise? Joe, you haven't been around. I know you've been covering the Cavs in the East, but I made a declaration uh, before the playoffs started that I would not be announcing lineups, if only because I felt bad about lying to Tim Kawakami a few years ago. And so just to uphold my, my family's name, I'm, I just... <laughs> I <laughs> wanted to establish that standard, uh, so I will not be uh, announcing anything. All the way in the back. Coach uh, Logan Murdoch, uh, Bay Area News Group. Uh, Pat McCall, you know, he had a couple games then where he played in the uh, conference finals, and with Idia, has, how was he coming along, and could he, you know, maybe have a bigger role in the series? Uh, he could play a few more minutes now that he's gotten his feet wet and uh, he's had a few more days of, uh, of court work. And, uh, he had some knee soreness uh, a couple weeks ago that is now gone. And, and so he's feeling healthier and uh, there's no question he could play a bigger role in this series than he did in the last one. Fourth row in the middle. 
Uh, Steve, everybody wants to go to the finals, uh, but there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of second guessing, a lot of attention. I'm wondering if you can say you have fun doing this. I do, I do. This is fun. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's why you do it. If you can be part of a team that's this good and give yourself a chance, um, that's what you want. It's devastating when you lose, and it's uh, euphoric <coughs> when you win. Um, but that's sports. You know, we're, we're competing for something that's really important, and you know we could all go do something else and live a much more balanced life, but uh, we all, we all kind of like this, uh, this opportunity to compete, and you have to accept what, what comes with that. Next row on the right side in the middle. Uh, coach, um, actually, four straight year entering the finals with the Cavs. Uh, last season, you guys, Cavs, all got 12-0. Uh, and this season, I think you, both of teams, been through a lot. Uh, does it make you guys uh, appreciate each other even more? No doubt. No doubt. We have, uh, I think we each have an understanding of what the other has had to go through to get to this point. Um, we, we understand how difficult it is to get to the finals four years in a row. It's only happened a handful of times in NBA history. So to, to do it in the exact matching pattern with Cleveland uh, is obviously unprecedented, but there's a respect level for, um, for what they've gone through and, and, uh, and vice versa. Any questions for Coach? Quick, last one in the middle. Hi, Steve. Paul Flanner, SB Nation. You mentioned uh, Ty and the respect you have for him over the years. What stands out to you about going up against his teams over the last three years, whether it's technical or, or any other aspect of that? Uh, I think they, they're, they're really sharp. Their staff is sharp. They've made a lot of adjustments uh, against us you know, over the years as we've played them, uh, as we have with, uh, against them. I think there's, um, there's an awareness that uh, you know, it's, a, it's a staff that it really understands uh, how to kind of change tactics on the fly, in between games, uh, during games, and uh, so yeah, they're they're really good at what they do. Uh, just one last one here on the left side of the middle. Uh, Steve, not a very serious question, but uh, if you haven't yet, have you had a chance to see LeBron's uh, short suit today? And if you haven't, maybe comment on it after the game, perhaps. You got it. Thank you. <laughs>